Amazing. That is amazing. 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 Isn't that amazing? That is amazing. Welcome to the Fall Estate. I am Destiny Peterson. And I just want to remind you, don't forget to ring the bell, thumbs up, and follow, all right? That's the shit. We got to really pay an eye on that. We're talking about something very important today, dating. And the hardest thing in the world for men today is to find a date. I have with me Julie Spira. She's an award-winning dating coach and best-selling author, and she has been doing coaching for at least 20 years or so. Julie, thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. This is going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. So you've been coaching for 20 years. Yes. Actually, I've been coaching singles on finding love online with dating profiles for 25 years now. Wow. And my producer was telling me that you are one of the original online dating thing way back when, right? Right. We don't say way back when, but yes, I was one of the original <laughs> people who actually um, went out there and dipped my toe in during the days before we had iPhones and high-speed internet and dating apps. And it was a very interesting time because that's when nobody wanted to admit that they were dating online, but yet everybody was still searching for love. Yeah. What year was that? That was 1994. I didn't even know they had online dating apps. <laughs> <laughs> it was mostly, um, it was mostly message boards and it was mostly uh, you know online and during dial-up internet days and it was one year before match.com was created and it was actually six years before eHarmony was created. Wow so how did you find that at that time? Do you remember how you discovered online dating? I, my heart got broken, and I'm like, well, <laughs> what do I do about this? And I was a technology executive at the time, and I was traveling a lot, and I said, well, I need to take matters into my own hands, and I became a charter member of something called Love at AOL. And it was during the dial-up internet days where they used to charge you per minute to actually join, a, you know, to log on and even just get your emails. And I started meeting interesting men, uh, and then I started, my friends were getting jealous, like, how are you meeting all these great guys? And I, I couldn't keep saying I met them for coffee. I finally had to say <laughs> I met them at Love on AOL. And then I started writing profiles for other people because they wanted to know what that secret sauce was. Amazing. You have been on so many, uh, I mean, news shows and talk shows and I don't have it here, but I had, I'm sorry, but tell about all the different shows you've been on. That was amazing. Yes, it's, it's been really exciting because finally the world realizes that we're looking for love online and it's the most popular way to meet. 39% of couples actually met through online dating as compared to 20% that met through friends, even right. though everyone says, I want to meet through friends. So I uh, did Maria Shriver's profile on the Today Show, yeah. and I've been in Cosmo, and uh, you know, on almost all of the talk shows, really trying to teach people how to sort of shorten that cycle so they can find a compatible mate. I was reading uh, about all the different shows you've been on, and I don't think there's one out there that you missed. <laughs> <laughs> so you must be very important. And well, yeah, now I'm here with you. That's, isn't that amazing? <laughs> on the fallen state. So I got it. You said you were heartbroken at one time. I think I read, so you were dating a guy, he was a, at the time you met him, he was a liberal guy, right? Yes. And then you were liberal. Yes. And you guys had something in common. And then the Great White Hope came along, and he liked the Great White Hope, right? Yes. He went from being a, a registered Democrat to supporting the Republican Party. Yeah. But it wasn't just that. It was he decided that he wanted to, um, you know, become like the biggest fan of Donald Trump. Right. So it was, That's who the great white hope is. Right. And it was MAGA everything. It was <laughs> Donald Trump was making St. Patrick's Day great again. And Donald Trump was making just about every day of the week great again. And I had a really hard time with it, you know, as a woman and as someone that, you know, stayed liberal. And I wanted to understand, like, what is it? Is it everything or is there one particular <laughs> issue that that makes you feel this way? And it got to the point where our, our values just weren't in a line and we had to go separate ways. And then, if I remember correctly, you went off and got married. 
<laughs> he got married, and then down the road, both of you divorced the two people you were with, you both were with, and then you met up again, am I right? Yes, this was a really romantic story. This is at the time when we, when we split up and we both married other people five days apart. Right. Um, that was many years ago, so it, we were both still <laughs> Democrats at the time. We were both liberal. <laughs> uh, and when we got back together, um, he found me on Facebook. And when the coast was clear and he got divorced, he never, he never stopped thinking about the one that got away. Right. And I still thought about it. Right. And at that point, I was sort of single and he was very single and he reached out to me and it was as if no time had gone by because we were such we were such soulmates and I don't know, you know whether we were necessarily you know soulmates or not but it felt that way for right. both of us because even throughout the years we would have similar things happen in our lives and our paths were very parallel but we Amazing. were with different people. Right. And so you got, did you start back dating again? We, we fell back in love again. Yeah. We did. And, and then what happened? And then he became a Trump supporter and we broke up. <laughs> and it was, we, we, I waited until, we waited until well after the inauguration, but it got to the point where I really felt very strongly about different issues, political issues, issues, uh, climate you know, change, medical care. There were just, we just had a lot of different values. And had I met him today, I probably wouldn't have fallen in love with him, but we had so much history right. and so much magic that we needed to try and see if we could have another second chance at love. Who decided to break up, you or him? Uh, um, it was kind of him. Um, it, we were definitely, uh, it, was, it, it was tense because of the politics. Uh, and I, I tried not to talk about it too much. But yes, yeah, so we broke up shortly after Valentine's Day. Um, and it was right after the inauguration. And it got to the point where I couldn't watch it and he wanted to keep watching it. And so we went separate ways. We wished each other well. And shortly afterwards, I decided to put my own profile on Match. <laughs> Said, I'm going to fire myself if I can't meet someone. Yeah. And I decided that I wanted to meet someone that was in line with my values um, politically and that it was important to me. And maybe 10 years ago, it wasn't that important. Right, right. And so you met a liberal guy. I did. And are you still with him? <laughs> I am. And, and how's it going? Oh, it's, it's going great. We're together a few years now. Um, we met, he was the first person I met after uh, when I put my profile up. Oh, I see. And I thought, okay, I'll go on one date with someone just to get it out of the way. Right. But I just found it to be so smart and interesting. And we both like watching political talk shows together. So we had that in common. And I find that right now, being able to talk about politics or not, um, it's become a big deal breaker for relationships. Yeah. Couples need to decide whether they don't want to talk about it and they're on the same page, or whether they want to be like we are, where we watch Bill Maher together in the morning talk shows together, and we talk about it, what's happening in the news every day. But it seemed to me it would be boring to have someone who agreed with you. It's like a conservative you know. Liberal together would be exciting because you would hear both opinions. It, it, it would, you know, kind of wire you up, and, and then you can have good sex. <laughs> well, it's always about having good sex. <laughs> well, we don't we don't agree on everything, and and my uh, nearly departed ex. I mean, I wish him nothing but the best because we will always love each other right. because we have so much history. Um, and our lives just went in different directions, but that doesn't mean that it was a failure because we did spend a total of nine years together of creating great memories. And at this point, we just went our separate ways. And was your heart broken the second time by him? It wasn't, it wasn't, because it was broken, but I felt like I don't have that what if circling in my oh, head anymore. Yeah. Because everybody always wonders about the one who got away and do they make a mistake in breaking up with someone? And if they did make a mistake in breaking up with someone, what would they do if they got another chance? I didn't expect this other chance because it was 17 years later of no contact. Oh, yeah. And my curiosity got the best of me. And of course, the chemistry was still there. And we decided to you know, try it. So where, and I've been wanting to know this ever since Whitney Houston days. Where do broken hearts go? Where do broken hearts go? I hope they go to a broken heart cemetery. <laughs> um, hearts are made to, to, to heal. 
And you know, breakups, um, they're seasonal. Like for instance, there's a big breakup season that's about to happen, that happens every year around the holidays for some, for some reasons. One, somebody doesn't want to buy an expensive gift for someone or they don't want to propose. Yeah. Or two, they just say, this isn't the person I want to kiss under the mistletoe or celebrate the new year with. And so we see a lot of breakups you know, from sort of Thanksgiving to New Year's and then a lot of people that are becoming single for the first time around the new year through Valentine's Day when they're hoping to find a new mate. Amazing. So you would never love a man that uh, supports Donald Trump? That's not true. I, I would love anyone um, for <laughs> certain things in their life. I'm just saying that I don't want to be at this point in my life romantically involved with a Trump supporter. It's not if somebody <laughs> voted for Donald Trump. I would just ask, are you planning to vote for him again? <laughs> and why are you, what are your reasons? Are they financial or because you want the wall? I, I'd like to know what the reasons are. And why are you so against Donald Trump? I'm not against Donald Trump. I'm upset about certain things. I mean, I really believed in, I think Obamacare was really a fabulous thing. And, and I, the thought of people losing their medical care really bothers me. Um, seeing the children separated at the border in cages, you know, it's a humanity issue for Obama me. Obama did that, though. He started that. Right, but it's gotten really bad. And, and I feel as though, um, I feel for me, it's not that I'm super liberal and I only want liberal friends. I come from a split family. and I'm not giving up my friends and family. Right. I'm, I'm just saying as far as um, someone who is middle of the road, or just follows a political party, I can understand that. But it, when someone says that, that Donald Trump is the greatest of all time, and I see certain things in the news cycle that bother me, it's not a fit for me. Oh, I see. So would you find me a date if you learned that I call Donald Trump the great white hope, he's a real man, he's not afraid, he put the country first, he's a man of courage, and whether you're male or female, black or white, he's going to correct you. He doesn't overreact to things he overcome. Can you find me a date? I can absolutely find you a date. Oh, yeah? But it might be in Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing. 50% of the couples, that, the singles that I'm coaching right now, are Trump supporters. Oh, really? And, and we talk about it early on. How important is it to you to ask your date if, who they voted for, or how they feel about politics? Or you, do you not even want to talk about it at all? And so we really talk about that early on. It used to be, I didn't want to date a smoker. Now it's like, I can date a smoker because he'll quit. But people, um, I, my clients that are Trump supporters, for the most part, have no problem dating across party lines. Right. It's the liberals that are having the problem dating across party yeah. lines. And I'm not surprised to hear that because liberals tend to be so emotional and they tend to overreact to everything. They're so soft. So I'm not surprised it's the liberals who have the hardest, you know, the worst time with the conservatives. Right. And it's interesting, on my site, loveintheageoftrump.com, that's my upcoming book, right. Love in the Age of Trump, I have a poll, Would You Date Across Party Lines? And it's about 68, 69% of the people who answered that question said they would not. Um, so that's over half. And I think it's a big issue. OkCupid, okay, which is a site I love, they have uh, lots of questions on their site. And they also found that over 50% of people felt uncomfortable dating somebody that didn't have similar political views. So that meant either direction, not necessarily who the candidate is, right. but they felt yeah, that it was important that. to talk about a candidate that they both shared. So do you coach men and women? I do. You do? I do. And is it true that your book tells about 250 online t uh, dates. <laughs> that was my first book. My first book was My Romantic Journey, The Perils of Cyber Dating. And that's when I was this, you know, internet dating pioneer. <laughs> and I went on over 250 dates um, when my heart was broken. And it was a great experience. And I met people that I'm still in touch with today. And I met people that I had relationships with. And I met people that I became friends with. And I think the more dating that you do when you're single, the better dater that you become, 
because then you really understand what you like and what you don't like about someone. How did you have time to go out with 250 <laughs> men? I know, it sounds like a big number, right? Were you getting paid to do that or something? <laughs> no, actually no, I mean, I didn't even realize it was research at the time. I was trying to replace the love of my life right. with, with an internet mate. But it was over the course of 10 years, so it really, when you think about it, it's, it's some people these days go on three coffee dates a week times uh, 52 weeks, and there's your 150 dates in one year. <laughs> Do you have a dream man idea? idea? What's your dream man? My dream man is not someone that I can put make a list of, of requirements for, because every time you write down everything that you're looking for in this perfect mate, usually the women's list is this long and the men's list is about that right. long, um, and then you meet that person and they, ch have, they check off every box, and then you meet them and you just don't connect or you don't have that chemistry. So I think the most important thing in finding my dream partner is to be, some, we be with someone that I feel very comfortable with, comfortable in being myself, comfortable in sharing my fears nice. and sharing my dreams. Amazing. So when you said partner, you mean man and not a woman, right? For me, it's a man. Oh, good. But it'd be fine if it was a woman for a woman or a man for a man. For me, it's a man. Do you hook up those kind of people too? Oh my gosh, yes. yes. Really? Uh, yes, there's a large percentage of same-sex couples that are meeting online, actually more than heterosexual couples. And why is that? Because it's very easy to flip up your phone and turn on an app and start swiping left or right and have a date within a half hour. <laughs> so let me ask, is it a weakness on the part of a man to look for a date online rather than just being natural in life and running into a woman and dealing with her? Is it a weakness to go online? It is not a weakness to go online as a man. As a matter of fact, it's a, it's a strength. I think so many men that I meet and men that I work with, what they do is they focus so much on their career and they're building, building their careers and then suddenly they're the CEOs of companies and they forgot to nest. So they take that attitude of how they built their career and say, okay, now I need to find love and we take a business approach to finding love online by creating a profile and being active online, just like you would be active if you were looking for a job. That's amazing. What is love? I wanted to ask you that uh, since you've been doing this for so long. What is love? Do you know, one of the most interesting <laughs> things about love to me in all of my research is that for many years, the number one question that was written in on a Google search is what is love? Yeah. And that just says to me, and that was for years and years, that people are so confused. Yeah. They want it so badly, they desire it so much, but they're not really sure what it is and what it feels like. And I think when you're looking at love, love there's a difference between being in love and loving a person. Because being in love is taking it to that deeper level, through your heart and through your soul, bringing the most vulnerable side of yourself out. And that's what happens when you fall in love is you have to allow yourself to get hurt because if you end up winning the love jackpot, it is so worth it. Is sex love? Sex is an action. Anybody can have sex with anybody, whether they love them or right. not. Yeah. And I think the way that men and women view sex are very different. I know for women, they need to feel loved right. before they want to open their hearts and their bodies and have sex with a man or a partner. Most men, they connect when they have sex, and then they can start to feel love afterwards. And yet the women, they don't want to have sex until they know, well, they've signed the deal, and we're in a committed relationship, and we love each other. So they're on different courses for the most part, and somehow they need to meet in the middle. And for me, and for the people that I work with, uh, we really look at sex as part of a committed relationship. I wanted to ask you, um when men and women meet online through your uh, uh, work and then it doesn't work out, do they contact you that, hey, this isn't work, I need to look for another one? Exactly. And who <laughs> complain the most about the date, the men or the women? The women complain the most. And what are, what are their complaints, <laughs> their primary complaints? Their primary complaints were, he was cheap, he didn't pay for my coffee, or <laughs> you know, he, he was 50 pounds overweight and his pictures don't look like his profile photos, although men say the same thing about women. Yeah. Um, or he didn't have a job and he said he did, or 
you know, I just can't see a future with this person. And I find that ridiculous because after one date, you don't know if you can have a future right. with someone. Right. It takes time to get to know someone. And what do the men complain about? Men complain that women's profiles are inaccurate. <laughs> they say that they lie about their age and their weight and, they're, and that, you know, they've got prom photos up instead of recent photos. And that's probably one of the biggest issues that men complain about are age and weight. Yeah. Because men are very visual yeah. and they like what they see. And so if they've ordered something on the menu and something else is delivered, <laughs> um, they like to, you know, they, they'll that's walk out. That's for sure. So do you know in advance that the person that's posting their online picture, is that the real person? Do you, do you deal with that or you just don't bother with that? Oh, no, I bother with it a lot. I'm, I'm very hands-on. I mean, I have a real strategic approach when we find a match for someone. We look at their profile. We look at their photos. We get their cell phone number. We do a Google search on their cell phone number to make sure it matches up to uh, the right person. Yeah. Um, we have accountability partners. So when they go out on a date, they either text me or text a friend to let us know that they are safe and that the person is a good person, they're having a nice time, or that they're leaving. And it's a, it's a very important thing for people to feel safe when they're dating a line and they're meeting somebody brand new. Amazing. And so do you get uh, men and women asking for interracial dating? Like, I want a black girl, or I want a white girl, I want a Chinese, and the person may be of a different race. Do you do mixing up like that? Um, everybody's so much more open to, to mixed race re right. um, um, relationships right now. I don't think people specifically ask for it, but they're very open to dating, um, dating a different race. I had one client who only wanted to date Asian women, and that was it. <laughs> He was only going to date Asian women. Was so. it a white guy? And he was a white guy. And white you know, he man, how could so white men love Asian women so I much? have no idea. I'm not an Asian woman. But, <laughs> but in any event, that was his case. For the most part, uh, people know what they're looking yeah. for. They have a type. And so when we do these searches, we check the boxes so the algorithms from the dating apps can do their magic and bring us the best matches so we don't waste people's time. Have you ever uh, recommended to a client that they should meet a person, in, I mean another person in person rather than online? Like, no, you're bad for online. You need to go out and meet someone in person. I am happy if you meet somebody in the grocery store <laughs> or the <laughs> post office. But I think that when you are single, you need to really um, cast a wide net. And what that means is make sure that you look your best when you go out and put your makeup on. Don't wear sloppy clothes in case you do run into somebody in the grocery <laughs> store yeah. or at Starbucks. And also create an on online dating profile. And the reason we do that is... Again, if my clients meet somebody offline, I'm happy. It's worked. Right. But they've also put this energy into looking their best online. Yeah. So basically, you know, do both. Meet people online, meet people offline. But if you're going to meet someone online, meet them sooner rather than later. Yeah. Do you recommend it not have sex when they date online and wait until way down the road or wait until marriage or something? You know, the sex talk is very individual. Most of my clients are looking for serious relationships. And so most people aren't so quick to take their clothes off until they know that they're in a committed relationship. Yet I know other people that say they, they want to have sex on a first date. They want to try out the goods and make sure that they're sexually <laughs> compatible. Uh, I, you know, for me personally and for the way that I coach, it's really about finding a committed relationship and that, and there's several levels of intimacy, and sexual and physical intimacy is part of it. But Amazing. there's so many other areas, and they need to find it all. In your opinion, which is the best dating app out there? <laughs> My gosh, the best dating app. There are over 2,000 dating apps out there. So I can't say that there is a best. There are several, I think, that are very good. And I think it's really important to be on about three at the same time. Oh. And the reason is you should try one dating app that has a lot of members. It might be, it might be Bumble, OkCupid, or Match. And then try another dating app. If you're looking for somebody Jewish, you might want to go on JDate or JSwipe. If you're looking for someone who's a vegetarian, there are dating apps for that. There are dating apps for singles over 50. So we call those niche dating apps. So I like to make sure that people are on the niche dating apps where they have a lot in common with the people they're looking for 
and that they're casting the wider net on the on the larger apps. That's amazing. A lot of young people tell me about Tinder. Would you recommend Tinder? Tinder is really trailblazing. It uh, they've got 1.6 billion swipes with a B a day. Wow, Tinder does. Yeah, they have yeah over 25 million matches you know a day, and so it's hard to not ignore Tinder. But after a while, people get a little tired of swiping, swiping, swiping. And the point of these dating apps isn't to get this sort of ego boost that people like you. It's to meet someone and to try and find a relationship. I know so many guys who travel a lot and they travel around different places. And they, and they are millennial guys. And they've been telling me that they meet girls on Tinder just to have sex. That's very true. So they meet them from whatever town they're in. They feel horny. They go on Tinder. <laughs> <laughs> go have a cup of coffee and next thing you know they have sex and they're done. Well, you know, it, it, these are location-based apps. So when you travel and you open up the app, it will show your location yeah. and how far away this other person is from you. It won't say their exact location, but you could see that somebody's 10 miles away. So, so those people are not looking for love. They just look, those men and women are just boys and girls are just looking for sex. Huh? I disagree. But if you're traveling in the country and they just... Once sex that night, they go on Tinder and the girl shows up. She has to know it's just for sex. If that's what they both want, then that works for them. But there are so many couples that get married and who have met on Tinder, who really? have children who are Tinder babies. So we have so many success stories of couples finding love on Tinder. So although in the beginning days of Tinder, it had a reputation of being a hookup app, after a while, other people try Tinder who aren't looking to hook up. Really? Yeah. I was surprised to hear that. About, I'm not into the online stuff at all. I do it the old-fashioned way. At the market or at the whatever, right? Just run into women wherever and if I wanted to talk to them. But I was surprised to hear that Tinder was so available where men and women understood it and they just meet anywhere. You know, they're down at Las Vegas and they... Well, really what happens in Vegas night. is supposed to stay in That's Vegas. Right. <laughs> That's right. But I think if you, one of the most important things about these dating apps is you need to be specific about what you're looking for. Yeah. So if you have in your little bio, and it's a, it's a piece of digital real estate, and you say no hookups, then if somebody's looking for a hookup, they can swipe left and not be oh, matched with I you. See. And, and if you say in your profile, um, looking for something casual, then understand that the chances are they're looking oh, to I have know sex. That's what happened. I didn't know in, the, in there you can put, I'm just looking for a hookup tonight. Exactly. So oh, I believe I in that. truth and advertising. So if you want to hook up, hook up with someone so there's no sex regret. But if you're looking for a serious relationship, make that known. Some men tell me that they run into guys who look like and act like women, but they find out later just before bed or right at the bed that it's a guy. How can they avoid that? I don't know that you can really avoid that kind of misrepresentation. It's very rare. It's very rare. Um, what we do is we look at somebody's profile and we look at the photos and then we hop over to their social media, just like you found me on Facebook. Well, I look at people's Facebook profiles and I look at their Instagram profiles and I want to see current photos to make sure that everything matches up. So is there like a number one challenge you've had to deal with? What's the number one issue or challenge you had to deal with in the last 20 years of doing what you do? Oh my gosh, 20 years. I would say 20 years ago, the biggest challenge was getting people to realize it's okay to meet someone online because they thought it was a place that just desperate people and losers went to right. or socially challenged people. Yeah. And so it was getting rid of the stigma 20 years ago. 10 years ago, it was more about getting people to start using apps and using Facebook and looking at it as a social dating experience. And now the biggest challenge is politics. It is the number one deal breaker for a lot of singles and couples. That's amazing. And mostly the men um, don't want to talk about politics because actually the men are just <laughs> looking for Possibly sex, but, they're, yeah. they're, but they don't talk about politics as frequently as a woman does. Because if they did, they might not get the woman to get the sex from. Exactly. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine myself going online for a date. I just, it just seemed to me, because I'm, a, I'm from the old school, it just seems so unmanly. 
It seemed like a beta male. You know, beta? That it's like, it just seems so unmanly. Am I wrong? I think you're wrong. First of all, if you can meet people offline, that's fabulous. You're a good looking guy. You should be able to meet people everywhere. Right. But what happens is, a lot of people are very busy with work and they don't have time to actually um, go out and find places to go oh. to meet women. Yeah. And people aren't meeting in bars anymore. And if they're not being fixed up for their friends, and if the friends say, hey, I don't know anyone good enough to introduce you to, you have to take matters into your own hands. And that's why everybody, including alpha men, are jumping on the online dating bandwagon. So I want to ask you uh, about uh, Zoomers and millennials versus boomers. Okay. What a mess, huh? On the Today Show, you gave uh, baby boomers advice on dating. First, I want you to tell the folks, what is... Uh, what are baby boomers? Okay, baby boomers, I'm a baby boomer. <laughs> <laughs> I have to look up the exact age, but boomers basically are, are people that are probably in their you know, 50s and 60s. Yeah, from 1946 to 1955. Right, and so they're, they're singles in their 50s and 60s, some in their 70s, and many of them have been married before, and they're divorced, and they've suddenly raised their children and they have empty nests, and they're like, well, what, what do I do now? I mean, and they never had to date online. They had a husband or they had a wife. And so the boomers are joining dating apps in record numbers now because they're looking for companionship. And they don't necessarily want to get married, but they'd like somebody to go to a movie with or a travel partner. Oh. And, and they find that meeting people online works for them because they don't want to be this odd person at a dinner table or not get invited to parties where people only invite people as couples only. And so they're not satisfied with just being around their children or grandkids. They need a special person for themselves? They don't want to travel alone. It can be kind of lonely, you know, oh, you know taking a trip alone. And so the boomers are looking for love? The boomers are looking for love. The boomers are also looking for sex, by the way. But they're boomers just not but they're sex? not looking for casual sex. Oh. They're looking for meaningful relationships and they would like to have, you know, a sexually healthy relationship. <laughs> Is there a cutoff point where they're not looking for sex at all, but just looking for companion? There are lots of people um, that are looking just for companionship and they just have lost interest in sex. Again, if your partner and you're on the same page when it comes to sex or the frequency or infrequency of sex, then you can be a match. And so the younger generation, are they looking for something different? I think the younger generation, they're looking for love, but they're very confused as to what love and dating is about. And they tend to go out in groups. So they go on group dates, and then they come to me and they say, I'm kind of confused. I like this guy, but I'm not really sure whether we're dating or not. Right. And I'm like, well, was it just the two of you? No, we went out in a group. Well, did they pay for your meal or your drink? Well, no, we went Dutch. I said, well, then it then you're hanging out. Yeah. Oh, but I thought we were dating. I said, well, then you need to tell them that you're interested in going out alone, just the two of you. So there's a lot of confusion about how to define dating. Yeah, I noticed that with the boomers. They do go out in groups, and then when they're out at a party, they dance in groups. They don't dance one-on-one. -on -one. they like in a circle, like, or they just dance with anybody that's standing there. So you can't really tell that you're on a date because everybody's together all the time. Right, and so it's important if you're really interested in someone, you need to flirt. You need to let them know, you know, I, I have tickets for this fabulous concert on Saturday. Would you like to join me? But a lot of young men, millennials and others, are afraid now to be alone with a woman like that, to say those things to her because they may be accused of sexual harassment. We have, I mean, the Me Too movement is a very, very serious issue, and men don't want to be too forward. Frequently, they don't want to be accused of being a sexual predator. Right. When deep down, they undress you with their eyes on the first date anyway. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> so I think it's really important to have a safe sex talk. It's very important to make sure that you talk about the fact, not on a first date, but if you're on a third or fourth date, you talk about the fact that you'd like the relationship to come, become more intimate, but you'd like to know that um, they don't have any sexually transmitted diseases, and can you oh both go God. and get tested? And you know what, if you're gonna do a background search on a company that you might work for or hire someone for, you should be able to do um, an SDT test to make sure that you're healthy. <laughs>
who want to date like that? You know, when I was growing up and we were dating, we didn't have conversations. We let the the feeling drive the, the whole thing. I know. We didn't have to say, do you have AIDS? Do you have STD? Uh, or are you going to call me a molester? Or, or, or any of that. Remember those good old days? Yeah, we just rolled into relationships. Yeah. yeah. Is that better? Um, I can't say that it's better or worse. It'll be boring the way they have to do it. But the fact is, some people are actually having fun dating online because people are interested in them. I mean, I had a woman last week that I spoke with. She said, I have to tell you, I just joined a dating app and I haven't had sex in 20 years. I'm kind of frightened about it, but I really want to meet someone and have an intimate relationship. I just lost interest in my husband and then we went separate ways and then all I cared about was raising my family. Yeah. Now, now I'm in a home by myself and I'm lonely. What are Z's and millennials looking for? I think they really are trying to change the world. You know, they care about climate change. They like talking about politics. Um, they are really looking to build their careers and make sure that they're not living in mom and dad's house and that they can be financially stable before they enter a relationship. Amazing. I got to ask you about pickup artists. Ah, P U A. <laughs> P U A, pickup artists. What's your impression of pickup art? And tell the folks what that is yes. and your impression of it. So a pickup artist, these, these are, you know, typically these are the guys that they take these courses about how to uh, woo women and seduce women and make them feel like they are the only one and that they are so madly in love with them and crazy about them when they really only want to undress them and move on to the next. And there are, there are different online classes for pickup artists. It's the Casanova that's just never going to go out of style. And there's always going to be someone who's a player. You know, the classic player is a pickup artist. So pickup artists, they only teach men or do they teach women how to pick up as well? There are a lot of women that are playing the game, right. but for the most part, the pickup artists have been focused towards men. So is that a good thing? It's <laughs> not if you're about to play, play and tug with somebody's heartstrings. Um, I don't believe in leading people on. So these pickup artists, I mean, they just have the magic words. They say, I've never felt this way about a woman before. Um, my gosh, you know, if I had a ring in my pocket, I proposed <laughs> to you today. Uh, it, it, they wear the most funniest uh, outfits and crazy hats, like it's called peacocking. And they want to stand out and they want to get affectionate with you. And they'll start talking about sex, but not with you, just in general about things that they like doing in sex without trying to actually approach you to have sex, right. hoping that you'll get turned on enough to want to be with them. And so are the women falling for the pickup artist game? There are women that do fall for it. Why do they fall for it? Because some man just made them feel really sexy and they haven't felt that way in a long, long time. And so is it her fault or his fault? I think uh, <laughs> whose fault is it? Um, you know, relationships should be consensual. I think that you need to be authentic in representing what you're looking for. You can't go on a first date and say, oh, by the way, I'm looking to get married and have three kids because you're going like, to send somebody running for the hills. <laughs> but I think you need, if you write it in your profile and after you know, a certain amount of period of time, you let somebody know what you're looking for. Pick up artists, move on to the next. You know? So do you approve of pick up artists? No, I don't. You don't approve of them? No, I don't. And the reason? because I think they tug with heartstrings and people get really hurt. On the part of the man or the woman? The women get hurt and the men are just playing the game because they don't want to settle down, they want to have fun. And if you want to have fun, that's great. But say, from the beginning, I'm looking for a good time, I'm dating multiple people, I'm actually going to be sleeping with multiple people, are you okay with being in a polyamorous relationship? Most women will say no. But if you find someone who signs up, then, then it's a match. So do you wish that the pickup artist would go away? Oh, yes. Disappear? Yeah, go away. But there are, <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of shy men. You have the incel. There are other guys that don't ever want anything else to do with women because they've been taken advantage of by women and children have been taken away and all kinds of things. And so I hear a lot of millennial guys, incels and others say that they're shy. Some of them are shy and they don't know what to say to a woman. They don't know how to approach her. So the pickup artists help them, kind of train them how to do that. 
So they are grateful for the pickup artists. So they're seeing it a little different than you see it, what you see. Well, I see it differently uh, because I think there's a difference between a pickup artist and someone who is just learning to become more confident and increase their game. And, and the question is, is, what's the end game? Is the end game to be able to be more confident and have a good relationship with a woman? Or is the end game to have multiple people in rotation? So the pickup artist techniques, if it can make somebody feel more confident, but your, your reason for deciding to use some of these traits or these little tactics, you know, it's a strategy, uh, is because you want to be more confident, then find other ways to you know, have self-love and find other ways to become more confident as a person because confidence is the ultimate aphrodisiac. Yeah. And a woman wants a confident man yep. and a man wants a confident woman. And men do not want to be with an insecure woman. It's a turnoff. So is it possible that the pickup artist thing is a good thing because they're teaching men how to do it, shy men and other. But once you got some of these guys learn how to pick up, they take it further than what it needs to go or should go. Because people tend to use misuse anything. But for most of the guys, it's like a, a learning thing of how to deal. As long as, again, it, 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 the words pick up just, you know, it just bothers me. I don't want to be picked up. I mean, it sounds like I'm being dropped off. <laughs> so I think, I think, again, it really comes down to um, having a lot of self-love and becoming very confident and knowing that you are the prize, whether you're the man or the woman. You are the prize and you're worthy and you're the one that someone should be lucky enough to have a date with. Well, how about those guys who are really being helped? You want them to change the title. How about... <laughs> How about learning how to meet a woman and get a date? Right, how to become a, you know, a chick magnet. So they need to change <laughs> the uh, title. Yes, I think the words pick up artists is just what's bothering me. At, <laughs> at the end of the day, I think you know, it, whether somebody needs to be a man magnet or a chick magnet, we can teach them how to do that and how to attract more quality dates. But it really depends upon whether you want to be in rotation and have sex with multiple partners or whether you're looking for a meaningful relationship and you're feeling a little insecure and you need a little help. Amazing. And so if it wasn't for sex, would most men have anything to do with women? I don't know. I'm not a man. That's a hard question to answer. I think men, men need to have sex. Um, I think Why do they need to? I think it's just part of this sort of primal instinct, don't well, you? Well, I notice that when they become, when they need to have it, the woman becomes the sex dealer and the man becomes the sex addict. Oh, sex addiction, that's another whole yeah. serious issue. Yeah, so um, do you think that men would have anything to do with women if it wasn't for the sex? I, I, I think they would. Because there are some people that are looking for just companionship. And you maybe, mean like those old people? No, no. Of all ages, not everyone has a high libido. There are some people that are asexual. And they're looking for companionship. They might be looking for a relationship where they can co-parent and raise a family. But sex isn't that important to them. But I think you need to really determine in your relationship how important is sex. Because everybody's not on the same page right. at the same time. Yeah. That's amazing. Well, I know for sure that alpha male, he wants sex. Yes. But even though he's afraid now because of the accusations that can be made against him, what is an alpha male to you, in your opinion? Oh, an alpha male is a type A, um, super successful, very driven, loves their work, wants to be respected in the community and wants to be able to go out there and pick any girl he can get. <laughs> and how about a beta male? What's a beta male? Well, the beta male is sort of a little more emotional and, <laughs> you know, really kind of romantic and mushy, and he doesn't mind the woman taking the lead. Would you ever date a beta male? I have dated beta male. And how was that for you? You're like, oh, my God, hurry up and get me home. Um, I think there are times where, you know, in a relationship, you can sort of flip positions. What do you mean by that? <laughs> I don't mean on top and bottom. I mean somebody being an alpha, like in other words, some person can be an alpha in the relationship and be, take control where someone else can be sort of a little more submissive and a little more recipient. 
Um, and then it depends on the tasks at hand, where suddenly the woman can take control and the guy can be the recipient. But personally, do you prefer a beta or an alpha? I think most women prefer alpha men, or at least they think they do. They do. How about you? I do like alpha men. That's right. But most women, if not all, prefer an alpha male, not a beta male. But it's got to be really hard to be a man right now because you, you have to be an alpha male, but you have to be romantic. Because if you're not romantic and you're just an alpha male and you're just <laughs> grabbing the girl, okay, let's go have sex and are you happy? It's not going to work. The woman needs to be wooed and, rom and romanced. But I think women prefer alpha male because of that. Because like, if you just want to grab her, let's go have sex, she like the temptation of trying to get him to be emotional, to love me, to hold me, you know, just all that. And so you have the excitement in there because she's trying to get something that he's not going to give and he's trying to get something from her. And, you know, it's a negotiation. Yeah. Would you want a, uh, a man to be emotional with you? Yes. I, 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 you know, men are afraid to be vulnerable and show their weak side. Do you blame them? Well, I mean, it's not like you're going to break down and, and cry, but, but you know, <laughs> the fact is we want to know that you have a heart. Women want to know that we can connect with a man's heart. And in order to do that, he has to let his guard down and be emotional and tell you what his dreams are, tell you that you're beautiful and tell you that he's falling in love with you if he is, rather than being afraid that he says, I love you and you don't say it back yet. But the moment he says all those things, then she sees him as weak and now she hates him because women prefer a straw man, an alpha male, and they, but they'll try to bring you down to beta. And if you come down to beta, they're never satisfied with that. They, oh, oh he's weak. You know, they, Are you they, talking about a particular person right now or but, everybody in general? <laughs> <laughs> Do you, don't you agree that most women hate beta males? No, not at all. I know a lot of type A women uh, that are very successful in their careers. They're power attorneys, they're CEOs of companies, uh, they're, they're in entertainment, they're, they're really just type A workaholics. And you know what? They're happy meeting a man who is a beta guy, who maybe doesn't make as much money as, he do, as she does, and that they can have this partnership. And maybe when she comes home, he'll have dinner waiting on the table. Amazing. Ooh. So secretly, between you and I, we won't tell <laughs> There's <anyone>. no secrets. <laughs> <laughs> Most women love Donald Trump, huh? No, that's not true. But they do because they can't control him. There are women that love Donald Trump because they find that he's a strong personality yeah. or that he reminds them of their fathers or their ex-husbands. Yes. But there are a lot of women that, you know, dislike Donald Trump. And uh, you see a lot of this on Twitter and on Facebook where there are a lot of women that are completely anti-Trump. But I think secretly they're feeling something else. Like, ooh, that's a real man. But they're not going to tell their friends or anyone because he's a Republican conservative kind of guy. And they don't, you know, they want to hold on to their friends. So they're not going to tell you how they really, really feel. They don't tell you how they really feel. And often they don't tell you how they really voted. I spoke, right. I spoke to some man when I was doing research for the book who said that they didn't vote. <laughs> and I said, well, why did you not vote? How could you not exercise your right to vote? And the more I pulled and pulled, well, I actually, I did. I, I, I voted for Donald Trump. I just didn't want anybody to know because I didn't think yeah. I could get a date. But so I got to ask, so do you love the Great White Hope? Um, I, I have come out as, as, as being not a Trump supporter. Right. But so. do you love him? Do I love him? Um, no, I don't love him. You don't love him? I don't know him to love him. But do you have to know him to love him? No, but I don't love nor do I hate. So I don't hate him and I don't love him. You want to tell me when the cameras are off? I won't tell anyone. <laughs> like, yes, Jesse, I really do. Love him, but I won't vote for him. Because he's a strong man. He is a strong man, but there are other candidates out there that are strong as well, both men and women. Amazing. So did you tweet uh, that you suffer from post-traumatic syndrome or something like that? Back I did. In, I after did. After the 2016 election? <laughs> I did. I had something uh, called, you know, there's PTSD, which is post-traumatic stress disorder. Right. And then, um, then I felt that way, and I, and I looked at it as post-traumatic 
uh, post-election stress disorder, <laughs> or, or PTAD, which was actually post-traumatic anxiety disorder. And I feel that people are really suffering through, this, through post-traumatic anxiety dis and how disorder. how did you develop that? Um, it was just, you know, I was writing and I couldn't write, and I was depressed about the election, and That's I was amazing. worried about our country, and I knew about, you know, post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, and then I met another author recently, and she was talking about the same thing happened to her, and she called it post-Trump stress disorder. <laughs> amazing. So how are you guys going to handle it in 2020? Because he's got to be re-elected. Are you sure about that? Yes. How are you going to handle that? Um, I don't know. We have a year and a half to go. If you come to me for counseling. I will come to you for counseling. Yeah, I'll help you through that. And I might be able to help you find a date. You think so? Yes. Online? <laughs> um, in all honesty, do women respect alpha males more or beta males? It depends on the woman. A beta woman is going to want an alpha man. An alpha woman is going to want a beta man. And every once in a while, you can get people that have both in their personality types. Like I'm a type A personality. My boyfriend's a type A personality. But when I'm with him, I let him take control for the most part in a lot of the decisions because it makes him feel better. And I like bringing my feminine energy so you, to the relationship. So he wouldn't take it automatically unless you just let him take it? We're not talking about taking it. We're talking about the kinds of conversations that we have. Oh. And, you know, he was interested in me because of my intellect. So we, were, we, we kind of define ourselves as sapiosexual, which is relationships that are based on intellect. Amazing. And so I, I got to ask this, and then I want to I gotta put you on the hot seat. Oh, my uh, God. I've been in the hot seat the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Why are so many marriages ending in divorce nowadays? When marriages are ending in divorce, because it's easy to get divorced. Um, yeah, that's and, one thing. And people aren't signing up for a lifetime of commitment. I'm from a family where I, I so believe in love. My parents are married now 67 years. Amazing. So I have amazing role models. Yeah. And so I grew up in a really loving home. So I believe in happily, forever, happily ever after. And I believe that marriages should last forever but they aren't. And so because they're not, you have to realize that maybe what you wanted in your 20s is very different than what you want in your 40s and 50s. And certainly in your 60s and 70s is very different than what you wanted in your 30s and 40s. And so couples grow apart. Maybe they met in college or they met in their first job after school and, and they fell in love and got married and raised their families, but maybe they grew apart. If men and women were to get married nowadays and men became the head of their wives, would we see fewer divorces? Would we see fewer divorces? It sounds like a dictatorship. But would we see fewer divorces you under might see, that dictatorship? You might see fewer marriages because there are too many women these days that wouldn't sign up for that. Why not? Because, because they're going to end up old and lonely and no babies and... They're going to wish they had. No, but I don't believe there's a shelf life on love and that you have an expiration date. I really don't. But I, women tend to fall apart after 40. That's a terrible thing to say. Did I fall apart? No, you're taking care. You got love. <laughs> yeah, I got love in my life and we're red every day. But years ago, women relied on the men. Right. Don't to be the breadwinner. We, we need to go back to that, right? <laughs> no, women in the workforce are a fabulous thing. And so what's happening is women are making their own money now. So they're pickier about their partners. And the partners have to you know, be romantic, be an alpha man, be successful, have their own money, want to travel, fall in love, buy you a you know, diamond ring, whatever <laughs> it may be. They want everything. But that's but why they, they can't. But they could live their life without a man now because they've been able to become financially self-sufficient through building careers. That's a setup, though, because I hear a lot of women who believe that. They're taught that in the schools and places. So they go through that, and then they realize, oh, my God, that didn't really fulfill me. I need a husband. I need a man. I need kids. And now my life is gone. What am I going to do? A lot of women are feeling that way. I think both, both men and women are feeling that way. I mean, I've seen research, I don't know if you've seen this, uh, that men actually live longer when they're married 
and women actually live longer when they're not. Oh, I saw it the other way around, <laughs> is that men have shorter lives when they're married because the women kill them. Oh! <laughs> with stress and, and confusion. Are you sure it's not the workforce that made them all stressed <laughs> out? <laughs> so it's time for me to heat up this um, interview with my guests, so I gotta throw you in the hot seat. Okay. The hot seat. I, I need you to answer these questions quickly as possible. Okay, rapid fire. Okay, who causes more divorces, men or women? Women. Is America a Christian nation? I'm not sure. Do you trust vaccines? Yes. Are women more or less happier since women liberation? Um, equal. Are white people under attack in America? Oh, gosh, I hope not. Do you prefer older men or younger men? <laughs> uh, <laughs> older or younger, uh, I like both. Which do you prefer? Uh, five years younger to 10 years older, a range. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Are you okay with transgenders um, dominating women's sports? Yes. You okay with that? I am okay with that. Really? Should we build a wall around the border? No. Should Israel have a wall around its border? Oh, gosh, no. Are men, uh, oh, this is an interesting one. Are men buns attractive? Oh, yes. Ooh, in what way? Oh, you know, nice butt, yeah. <laughs> you like a nice butt? Yes. <laughs> is it good or bad to be a slut? Sluts! How do you define slut? Amorose. Mm. Um, you know, you're asking a person who's never had a one night stand. I tried once and it didn't work. It lasted three years. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, that must be good. Yeah. I'm, yeah. It was a one, I was in my twenties, but it still lasted three years. So it turned out to be a boyfriend. So I don't believe in one night stands. It's not for me. Other people are really happy having one night stands and going from partner to partner. And if it works for them, that's fine. Just make sure you're practicing safe sex. Did you have fun? I had so much fun. It was amazing. I know you have a new book coming out. Yes, right. Love in the Age of Trump, How Politics is Polarizing Relationships. I'm surprised that Donald Trump has affected relationships as well. He really has. He's impacted relationships. OK, Cupid did us you know, with their questions. They had 64% of uh, their respondents said that uh, they wanted Donald Trump to be impeached. That's amazing. How can people get it? Go to loveintheageoftrump.com. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for having me. Next time on The Fallen State. White people are scared of black folks. I wasn't did you know all, that? I, I did. You I know, know that. Do you know why they're afraid of blacks? I have a, I have some theories. What's your theory? <laughs> they're afraid that black folks will eventually want revenge. No, they're afraid that black folks are getting revenge right now. If black men were men, would black women be so lost? watching the fallen state we need your continued support donate to my nonprofit here subscribe and like the videos here and tell everybody and their mama about the show <laughs> <laughs>